Hey, Mike from Weigert's Bonsai here. Uh, just doing another species overview for you guys on another tropical that we're very excited about here at the nursery. Uh, it's called Desmodium, uh, also known as Lin Sam in Vietnam, or the Bluebell is a common name used here in the United States. Uh, this is a tropical um, that we're very excited about. It has rough bark at an early age. It gives a wonderful purple flower that's fragrant like grape soda, I've been told. Um, also a very dense small leaf and a tight growth habit. Uh, it will also hold deadwood, so you can use it for deadwood designs. So it's a unique material. Um, it is of the legume family, similar to rain trees, um, lysoloma, um, what are some of the other ones, a pea, you know, poinciana. So it does form a pod-shaped uh, seed. Common desmodiums that some of you may have seen are if you've ever looked down on your socks after running through a field, and you'll find those little pods kind of sticking to your socks. Uh, some people call them hitchhikers. That's a type of desmodium. And uh, I couldn't find any for the video today. That's actually exactly what the seed looks like on these guys. Um, today I've brought a few different types of desmodium. Not necessarily types, but a few different sizes, uh, a few different stylings, and a few different ways that we can work with this material. Um, so first off, we have a tree that I pulled from our nursery stock here. That is the $500 nursery stock. These were imported from Vietnam. So Eric got these in last year at some point and they uh, had just been imported. So all the small branching has basically been grown since that time. They have been pruned back a few times. So you'll see over in Vietnam, they were probably wired when they were young to kind of create these bends and give us some twists that we can kind of build off now. So the way we kind of work with this material is Eric and I have both kind of done a few of these. Um, Eric's is here and this is probably the freshest styling. This is one he just recently did. And you'll see he essentially just found the trunk line in the material in our Desmodium here. So you'd see he would have chopped it at the trunk line and wired the remaining branches to start to build out his design. Um, Eric chose kind of more of a conifer design, you know, pads angled downward. Um, also, it looks like these stubs at the top probably deal with those at a later date. I kind of do the same thing. I have a stub that I'll show you guys on my tree in a minute. Uh, and so we'll do kind of a rough cut first, see where the tree pops, and then make the second decision for where to cut it then. So you don't want to preemptively cut it and have the tree not push anywhere near that area. So we're going to let that kind of be for now. Um, over here on this one is a tree that I styled uh, back in November. So you can see it's grown out quite a bit. Um, I went also with a similar conifer style. Um, mine had two larger trunks that luckily had movement in them, so I was able to keep both and kind of go into a semi-cascade style. Um, this was wired uh, a second time, I think, about a month ago, down in the lower area, because all I did in November was cut it back, and so everything has grown on this lower trunk since November. Um, propagation on these guys is fairly easy. We uh, most commonly do it by seed because as I mentioned earlier, these trees drop a lot of those hitchhikers and these are small desmodium forming here. Uh, so propagation can just kind of happen on its own as they fall into the pot and start to grow or it's very easy to collect the seeds and seed trays and grow them out from there. Uh, but that's a very easy way to propagate and use the material. Um, going forward on this tree, me personally, I'm probably going to run some of these lower branches, get them thicker, um, get them a little fatter, and set some of the movement that I uh, put into these trees. These branches, because of the movement in the trunks, I also put uh, pretty extensive movement into each of the branches, twisting and undulating each of the branches to kind of match the character of the trunk. Um, so I'm going to grow those out and kind of set that movement before moving on to the next part of the design. Uh, I'll probably pot it this year in the spring once we warm up a little bit more and uh, I'll use our typical coarse mix which is expanded shale, lava, and a little bit of pine bark um, and it should grow pretty well in that. So, I got another desmodium here. This one was grown from a seedling that I received a few years ago and have been kind of twisting and turning as it grows out. Uh, so this is another way to use the material, especially small seedlings. 
It's something that they do on junipers in Japan at some of the nurseries, uh, starting them at a young age and just putting contortions into the tree so that it grows interest later on. Um, some of these branches that are twisted and turned can be used as gin if you're going for a deadwood design um, or you can on just grow them out and kind of get the, uh, uh, the ramification that we're looking for for the flowers. So on this tree you can actually see that it does have a few of the flowers. Uh, you can't smell them through the camera but they are fragrant. They smell like grape soda and at times throughout the, the season one of the reasons this tree is so prized is that the entire canopy will be filled with these purple blossoms. Um, so it is, it, it is a very unique tree, very beautiful tree to see the, the pads or the structure filled with these small purple flowers. Um, so you can look at the trunk and see the multiple twists and turns that I've put into this tree. It's about three years old and you can start to see that on the lower portion of the trunk it is starting to get a little bit of bark. Um, I did do a little tie-in here uh, with a little bit of mesh. It's not my favorite way of protecting trees when doing guy wires. Um, but oftentimes when I'm working alone at home, I'll grab whatever is easiest or whatever I have available. Um, so that's what I had at the time. One of the issues with growing trees out is you can see that this top portion, I'll group it all together. This is what's all growing from the top and our lower portion that's wired uh, is getting weaker. So I'm going to have to cut that back and I'll probably do that right now with you guys. So I'll just cut him back looking for bifurcation if I can. If not, I'm not worried about it. I'm probably gonna cut the whole top trunk back harder later. So bifurcation is the first division or just the division of a branch into two. Okay. So see, now I've weakened the top and hopefully this lower section will be able to gain some strength and we can start to pick up more uh, thickness, um, more vigor in this lower portion of the trunk, okay? Uh, so how this is made is at a young age. I have some cuttings over here You'll see these cuttings are wired when they're very very young Desmodium are extremely flexible if I can find one that here we go Here's one that's not wired. You can see that it's very very flexible. I can bend it very very uh, Strong put very tight angles into that if I needed to and even on thicker growth I'll just grab a large tree again and just show some of that thicker growth even large branches like this have a lot of flex to them. So you can see it's a tree that's very easy to work with with the wire, very easy to get those kind of contortions on. So put that back down. Um, so when I'm starting with young material, I don't necessarily always have a plan in mind. I, I want to act kind of like a force of nature. I want to just put unpredictable twists and turns into the tree and create interest. So I don't want to overthink it too much. Um, some of these were ones that I wired just when I got here. So you'll see some of them are twists, some of them are turns, some of them have hard cutbacks. Um, this one I compressed about as much as I could, just trying to squish it in as much as I could. So now these guys, uh, these three, I'll show you kind of the movement process. I just kind of grab them at the base where I've wired them give them a twist in the direction that I wired them, come back up, maybe back down, give that one a hard twist, and you'll see that's one. So we could take that a step further and kind of compress that angle there and bring it in a little tighter if we wanted to, so it just depends on what you're looking for. I don't want it to be that tight, so I'm going to do something like that. Okay, moving on, next one. And at nurseries in Japan, they'll do hundreds of these at a time. Done. This one's a little bigger, a little more to it. But you'll see I'm twisting in the direction that I wired it that'll actually tighten the wire and not create a gap. Gaps are bad. So you'll see the first part of that. Grab this. Second part. So now maybe we'll just compress that a little bit more. Maybe make 
make something like that. So you see it's very, very simple, very fun. One of my favorite ways to kind of grow material out. Um, I'll also show you the application of the wire, easy way to do that. Um, so I usually want to use half the diameter of the branch. So if you want to move something uh, extreme, then you usually have to do at least half the diameter of the branch. And so since we're bending the actual trunk and we're trying to get character into the trunk, um, if we really want to compress the design, then we need to make sure we use the adequate size wire. So one of the important things that I learned early on is that you don't anchor it directly into the soil straight on. You have to come at an angle. So I push down at an angle, if I can, until I feel it kind of go through the roots. Then I grab at the base and I prepare to make my first loop and I want to get that as close to the soil level as I can. You'll see. If you pinch some leaves, it's not the end of the world. But if you can try and avoid it, that's great. So I usually wire at about 45, 50 degrees. So we got our, our tree wired and ready to move, so that didn't take long at all. So go ahead and start to bend it. Let's give it a strong bend that way. Uh, something like that, we'll do that. Okay, so that's one way to work with very, very young material and prep it for being a bonsai. Um, Shohin bonsai, obviously being much smaller, take a lot less time to go from this to something that's usable in a Shohin pot. Uh, realistically, even this guy, he's been in training uh, from a seedling to now for about two and a half years, I think. So he could technically go right into a pot and make a fine Shohin now, start working on refinement. Um, but I intend to grow him out a little bit longer, just to get him a little bit bigger. Uh, so my development cycle will be a little longer. All right, so we have one more uh, piece of material here that I'd like to talk about. It's just the $25 Desmodiums that they have at Weigert's. Um, these guys were not wired as seedlings, so they tend to have a straighter trunk as opposed to the very curved, very undulating trunks. Um, so I styled one of these to kind of give you guys an idea of what can be done with those. Um, and here it is. So what I decided to go with was a twin trunk kind of deciduous style. Uh, instead of wiring the, the branches and putting these extreme twists and turns into it, I'm trying to match the trunk that already exists, trying to match that character and create kind of a more subtle design mirroring deciduous trees such as oaks, elm trees, um, you know, even our poinciana here in Florida, or even some of the ficus trees with that up and outward growth as opposed to that sweeping downward growth. Um, so what I'm hoping for on this tree is for it to fill in and we're really going to be banking on the fine ramification uh, to really bring this tree forth into refinement uh, as well as the mature bark that will develop over time and that will add a little bit more character to it um, but also relying heavily on those blooms to convey that, that feeling of, of majesty or that, that uh, feeling of delicate balance. So. Uh, so those various ways you can use this material, it is something that we're very, very excited about. As I said, uh, for those of you who've been following me for a while, uh, you know that I was very, very excited about our Premna microphylla and also the sea hibiscus and water jasmine. Uh, so this is something I haven't been this excited about in a long time. Um, so it is something that I do recommend everybody who's growing tropical bonsai to at least give it a shot. Uh, their treatment and their care, horticulture, it's very similar to a rain tree or other legumous trees. Um, you don't want to overwater them. You do want to feed them correctly. Uh, and if you do that right and just make sure they don't get too cold, they'll grow very, very vigorously and give you plenty of years of enjoyment. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.